Hi, and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hittiman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about estimodeling or using the model for estimating. Now, this has been pretty popular, something we've been showing at our road shows. So I wanted to just kind of show some of the different workflows um, for using the model for estimating. Um, with this one, this is pretty typical of just modeling in Tecla. So the idea is that you go ahead and you create your stick model. That is, you create your main parts in the model just by looking down at your desk, looking at the, the designs that you have there, and then looking up at your screen and recreating what you see. But one really great thing about some of the newer versions of Tecla is if you have those design drawings in PDF format, rather than looking at them on your desk and then looking back up at your screen, we can actually take that PDF and bring it right into the Tecla model. So through the file menu under insert PDF document, you can choose the document. If you know the scale, you can set it. If you don't know the scale, you just leave it at one. Uh, you can choose a page number, and then you simply click for where you want to insert this PDF. Now, don't be too concerned about where it is because it can always be moved later. Now, you can adjust this scale once it's been inserted, but we do have a tool available on the Tecla Warehouse that can make this a lot easier. If you go in and run the Reference Model Scale extension, um, what this allows you to do is click on the reference model, in this case an inserted PDF, then you pick on two points of a known dimension. Um, what happens then is a dialog box pops up asking you for you know, the, the dimension or how long is this actually supposed to be. So in this case we'll say 30 feet. And then the PDF gets automatically scaled up to whatever that happens to be. So while you still could do the traditional method of just math, you know, measure what it is, and then you do the math and figure out the actual scaling factor, um, this makes it a lot faster and easier. As I said, don't be too concerned about the position because a reference model can be moved, it can be rotated, um, you know, it's just like any other model object. So you can move it to line it up with a grid system, even build the grid system off of this just by using um, some of the different grid creation commands. But once you have this in, now, rather than just randomly drawing stuff, you can actually trace these lines. Um, you can see what size you're supposed to be putting in as you're creating them. So what I'm using now is a tool called Snap to Line. Uh, rather than picking two points to create an object, it will automatically find the extents of that line and then create a member at that full length. You can also turn on labels to help you see and kind of check your work as you're going along. Now you'll notice as I'm putting these in, uh, I'm not really concerned about them going all the way out to the center line or the grid line. Um, I'm just trying to rough them in right now. And, and that's okay because we're going to take a look at some tools that help us um, kind of clean up these parts once they're in the model. So I'll just finish up by putting some of these members along the outside perimeter of the building. Uh, if snap to line works, great. If it doesn't work, you can still use the two points uh, like you're traditionally making a beam. Now, I have those parts roughed in, like I said, so they still need to be uh, taken out to the edge. Well, we have a series of extend uh, macros or tools inside the Applications and Components catalog. Um, this one is called Extend Beam to Vertical Plane. So what you can do is select a bunch of parts like I've just done, you run the command, and then you just pick two points along a plane. And it will take all of those members that are highlighted and adjust the nearest end handle out to that plane. So you can keep this command active and adjust the other end as well. Um, this command also works, by the way, as a form of trim. So if you do have the beams a little bit too long, it will pull those handles back um, as well. So these extend tools are really, really helpful uh, to get things lined up nicely. So the idea here is that you can bring in pretty much the entire design set. And because reference models can be inserted at any location, we can bring them in at different elevations. Again, you can move them or rotate them if you need to put them in different locations. So you really get a great idea of just exactly how this building comes together from using the electronic copies of the designs in your model. You're not just limited to plan either. Uh, I have an example here. If I open up an elevation view, we can see um, bringing in the actual elevation plan or, or a section somewhere. And that same concept applies for either tracing or just checking your work. 
Another option, if you can get one, is to use an IFC file to generate the model for you. Uh, first, you can go to your reference model list. You can go ahead and add a IFC file. I have a sample here I can show you. Uh, when it comes imported into the model, it comes in simply as a reference at first. So this is not; uh, these are not steel parts yet. It's just the geometry there. However, built into Tecla is a converter. So you can run this on all or part of the imported reference model. I'm going to do it on just a portion. You can select this, run the convert IFC objects uh, tool, and what it will do is actually look at the shape from the IFC file, look at the Tecla shape catalog, and then if it finds a match, it'll go ahead and model in those parts for you. So if I real quick just go ahead and hide that reference model, we can see that there are now beams here, W16 by 31 in this example, that I don't have to create. So you can import the IFC, run the converter, uh, and then you have the steel model built for you. So having all of our material in the model obviously allows us to create reports and, and get a good idea of what that cost is going to be. But if we can get connections in the, in the model, that's going to give us even more information. So this is just an out-of-the-box tool called Auto Connection. And Auto Connection does have some defaults, like creating shear tabs or clip angles. Uh, what I'm doing here is just selecting a section of the model and running the shear tab option. And as you can see, it goes through and based on some rules, will put in some connections for me. Another option, though, is to use a third-party uh, solution like one from Connect. Uh, Connect does basically the same thing as Auto Connection does, except based on rules, it will actually design connections where the Tecla connections are there just for geometry. Um, so with theirs, rather than being all internal, you select a section of the model. You can write out uh, a whole area to their cloud service, which is going to do the engineering on that job. And then you can go ahead and pull down that connection information from the cloud, and it will build those designed connections for you. So there's a couple of options when it comes to getting these connections into the model, whether you create them yourself or rely on an external service like Connect. But once this information is the, in the model, obviously that's a much more richer uh, data set uh, to get your estimate information out. You got bolts, you got cuts, you got holes, you got welds. Okay, So you have all that information in there, and now we want to be able to find that information. So in uh, the... Tecla Warehouse, there is an extension uh, called US Custom Variables, and that adds additional values that you can filter for or search for inside of Tecla. So this one is actually searching for something called part cuts, uh, essentially any type of cut like a cope or something like that. So just a real quick example of building a filter for that. Now when I highlight the model, I'm grabbing only parts that have cuts in them. Okay, so something like this could be created for parts with cuts, parts with holes, parts with combinations of one or two. So here, just to, to visualize some of these things, I created a couple of filters that say yes cuts, yes holes, no welds, or yes welds, no holes, no cuts. So it's just simply doing some end and or searches through the filters. Um, so you could do this for view filters or selection filters. I'm just showing it with view filters for object rep. Um, and then when we modify the model, we can get a great visual uh, idea color-wise on, on how this model is being broken down by shop processes. You know, is it being welded or, you know, cut or punched? Okay, so those same uh, ideas using the US custom variables extension can be pulled into other places. Obviously, reports is going to be a big one. Um, the organizer is a great way to get this information out of the model. Uh, the organizer we talk about a lot in our videos. What it's doing is taking that model that we've built and breaking it down based on the name of the object. So here if we look at assemblies, um, I can group the assemblies if I want to based on something like profile or material grade. And then everything you see in that object browser portion of the organizer can be exported to Excel. Uh, it's a direct Excel export. There's no report or interme intermediary uh, kind of going between here and there. So this is just a, if you're using, you know, straight up Excel, this is a great way to get that information into Excel. Um, obviously, we can export things like KISS files and other reports into MIS systems. So if you are using something like Stru uh, Strumis or Fab Suite or Fab Troll, um, there's lots of ways to get the data out of the model into those systems as well. Now, one thing that we 
uh, introduced a year or so ago was the ability to use the organizer to actually write UDAs. So let's say that you have your own internal system that you mark parts with user defined attributes. I just have something very generic here saying user field one is going to get a text note saying this is a heavy assembly or a lot of work is required on this one, uh, one for basic and one for light. Um, so just real basic idea just to kind of give you a proof of concept. So I'm highlighting some parts here and then I'm going to add them to this group this category in the organizer. Um, so I'm going to do this for my heavy assemblies, I'm going to do this for my uh, what, what I called basic, um, and then I'm going to do it once more for those that I'm considering light. Um, so this could mean anything. I mean, these could be any values written to any UDA. This is just an example. So I'm um, uh, moving these last few uh, over to the light. And we can go ahead and start reviewing some of these. You know, first I can click through and I can see these reported um, in the object browser side of the organizer. Um, so we can get an idea of what's heavy, what's basic, what's light, just seeing that, that information reported. We can also visualize it. If I change this to highlight the objects in the model, uh, now it's going to highlight those parts as I go through. And then when we click the refresh button, it's going to go ahead and take those UDAs for heavy basic light and it's going to write those to those model parts which we can go ahead and double check real quick opening up the UDA for this column seeing that it's actually marked the heavy code to it um, checking one of these beams opening up its UDAs just to verify that yes it did indeed write the light um, so using the organizer we can take that information and write it ourselves if we want to now another great part of any bid is being able to kind of show off your work. Um, the 3D PDF is a really popular way for people to do this. This is another extension on the warehouse. You can include or exclude different object types if you want to. Uh, when you go ahead and publish this, uh, all, you don't need Tecla structures to view this model. It opens up in Adobe, which everyone has Adobe. So they can look at this, spin it around, um, want to make sure that uh, they have a, a good idea of how to navigate this. There's actually an option called spin uh, that's very helpful. You see me select it here. Um, and this allows me to rotate this model around, look at it from different angles. There are some quick access uh, views like top, front, uh, if you want to use those. But this is just a great way to share the model that you're working on with someone who doesn't have Tecla. So I know this is just a really brief overview of a lot of stuff. I'm going to include some links below to some of those extensions that you're going to find helpful. And as always, thank you for watching.